Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to continue the topic on pointers and we're going to talk about memory allocation. So there are two main types of memory that you need to be aware of. We have static memory, which is known as stack memory. So this is memory that is allocated on the stack. And then we have dynamic memory, otherwise known as heap memory or free store. And this is allocated on the heap. So one of the main differences between the two is stack memory is allocated at build or compile time. So basically, when you want to run your C++ code, you have to build it first, and then you, you run it. So when we are building our C++ code, we are translating C++ into machine readable code. So we're translating it into instructions. And at this time, there are checks for syntax errors and how much stack memory is needed. And basically, this is where all your variables and your function calls are stored. And we'll talk more about functions in later videos. And then we have dynamic memory. So this is heap memory or free store. And this is allocated during runtime. So unlike with stack memory, where you build your code and C++ determines how much space you need, heap memory is allocated when you run your program. So the heap memory is much larger than the stack memory. So for instance, let's say you are fetching emails throughout the day. You don't know how many emails you'll be getting throughout the day. So in this case, maybe it's better to store that data on the heap. And another example would be, let's say if you are playing a video game and the video game is constantly generating monsters and items, you don't know how many monsters or items will be generated because that might depend on how long the player stays in the game. So for that reason, maybe you would want to use the heap memory for storing those monsters and items. All right, so that's just a brief rundown of the differences between stack memory and heap memory. Now let's write some code to illustrate the differences. So let's say if I create a variable for my savings account, we now have a variable of the type int and this is created on the stack. And I can also assign a value. So I can do savings is equal to 10,000 and this value 10,000 is also stored on the stack. Now, if I wanted to create this integer on the heap, I would use a pointer. So pointers allow us to reference memory addresses that are stored on the heap. So to create an integer on the heap, I would do int star and let's call it savings pointer. And here I would write new int. So new is a keyword that allocates memory on the heap. And of course, with pointers, we are pointing to a memory address. So this saving pointer is actually a variable. So pointers are pretty much variables that are assigned memory addresses. So the savings pointer is stored on the stack, but the memory address that it's pointing to is created on the heap. So with pointers, if I want to assign a value at that memory location, I would have to dereference the pointer and then I can assign a value. So let's say I want to assign 50,000. So let's go ahead and print the two values. So over here, I'm going to do C out address of savings and savings. And then down here, I'm going to do C out savings pointer. And then let's get the value. So I'm going to dereference savings pointer. And let's put end line over here as well. So now let's save and run the program. And as you can see, we have the variable savings, which is stored in this memory address location on the stack, and it has the value 10,000. And savings pointer is also stored on the stack, but the memory address that it points to is stored on the heap. So this is the memory address location for the value 50,000. And we can actually get the memory address of where that pointer is stored. So I can just do C out savings pointer like so. So I'm getting the memory address of savings pointer. So if I save and run the program, you can see this is where it is stored on the stack. Okay. So the variable savings and the pointer savings pointer are both stored on the stack and this integer is stored on the heap. And with variables, I can also initialize the value. So I can just say 10,000 here and I don't need to assign it here. The same applies for integers that I create on the heap. I can just do parentheses. 50,000 like so, and then I won't need this line. So let's save and run the program. And you can see we get 10,000 and 50,000. So in Java and Python and other languages, there's something called a garbage collector, which frees up resources when they are not used. So in C++, because there is no garbage collector, we can accidentally cause a memory leak. So for instance, let's say I print this value out and then I want to change the value. I can do savings pointer is equal to new int and let's make it 75,000. And then if I print out this new value, let's see what happens. So let's save and run the program. 
So you can see the memory address of the pointer is here, and it is still the same over here, but what we're pointing to is different. The first time when we create 50,000, we allocate memory over here. And then afterwards, we allocate another memory address over here, and we assign it the value 75,000. So what's happening here is we have a memory leak. And a memory leak happens when you do not free up the memory that is no longer being used. So even though the pointer is pointing to this new memory address, at this old memory address, this value 50,000 still exists. So at this memory address, we can no longer use it and we can't access it to clean it up because there's no pointer pointing to this memory address anymore. So this 50,000 is stuck there. So this is called a memory leak. And this can be very bad if you have lots of values that are created on the heap, but you do not clean them up. They still take up memory. So in order to free up the memory, we would use the keyword delete and we would pass in the address. So pointers point to memory addresses. So I can just do savings pointer. And this will free up the memory where this 50,000 was created. So let's save and run the program. And you can see in this case, there's some optimization. And so the memory address is the same for these two integers. And that is because we freed up the memory using the delete keyword. So these two addresses are the same value. All right, so that's how you can free up memory on the heap. And one thing to note here is that you should never do a double delete. So here we are freeing up the memory address. But if I do this, we are trying to free up the memory address twice. And this is going to cause an error in your program. So once the memory address is freed up, you should not call delete again. And one more thing I want to note here is that let's say I free up the memory, but I do not reassign the pointer. What happens here? So if I save and run the program, we have the pointer pointing to the memory on the heap and it had the value 50,000. And then we freed up the memory, but now there's some random value here. And we don't know what this value is. This value could be a junk value, or it could be something that is being used by another part of the program. So this pointer, although the value is freed up on the memory, it's still pointing to that memory address location. And this is what's known as a dangling pointer. So a dangling pointer is a pointer that points to memory that we used to access, but we no longer have any need for. So we want to get rid of any dangling pointers. So in order to do so, we would just do savings pointer and assign it no pointer. So this is going to tell C++ that savings pointer is a pointer, but it is not pointing to any memory address at this time. So whenever you have a pointer that is pointing to a null pointer or a memory address that you do not have permission to access, you don't want to ever dereference and get the value at that memory address. So let's get rid of these two lines. All right, so as a quick recap, we use a pointer to allocate memory on the heap using the new keyword. And once we're done with that memory address, we can free it up. And to do so, we use the delete keyword. So we delete and pass in the memory address, and this will free up the memory. And then we assign the pointer to a null pointer so that we do not have a dangling pointer. All right, so that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to talk about allocating an array on the heap memory otherwise known as dynamically allocating an array. And in later videos, we'll talk more about when we should allocate memory on the heap versus allocating memory on the stack. All right, so that's it for this video. If you found this video helpful, make sure you give this video a like. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. And if you want to stay up to date on more C++ videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.